Let's get started with Bangkok. I wrote about Bangkok's token economics paper and it's available on economicsdesign.com under research. You can find the token economics paper if you're interested. Bangkok is basically the first automated market maker in the space. And since then, they have pioneered this use of automated market makers for decentralized exchanges and a lot of other DEXs are using it. They define the key conversion ratio for all these different math models in DEXs. What is Bancor? Bancor is basically a decentralized exchange and it doesn't only work on ERC20, so not only on Ethereum, but cross-chain like EOS and other um, blockchain protocols. Instead of using a token like Ethereum to allow for trade, they have their own native token BNT. BNT basically is the common denominator of all these different liquidity pools. Let's take a step back to understand what they are. Liquidity pools are basically these, these token pairings that's available on Bancor. And so you can imagine, you know, if I have my own token, so there's Lisa token and Bancor token in one pool, and then you have economics design token and Bancor to Bancor's token in another pool. So the common denominator between these two pools is Bancor. So if you think about the hydraulic pressure that we talked about just now, the simple hydraulic system, you have, you have this liquid, liquid and this system. So one system is Lisa's token and the other system is, or the other exit is economic design token. And the liquid inside that facilitates the trade, that's Bancor. Bancor is embedded into the math. Bancor's system works because there is a common currency that is available in all the different token pools, which is BNT, the Bancor's native token, and allows, allows it to facilitate trade within all these different systems. It works in a very simple way. It's like a hub and spoke model. An analogy would be planes. For example, you want to fly between New York and Hong Kong. And between New York and Hong Kong, the flights are full because or they just don't have the connection. So what you do, you fly first to Chicago and from Chicago you fly to Hong Kong. So this this thing where you fly to Chicago, that thing is basically BNT. So how it works, if I want to change New York tokens to Hong Kong tokens, I first go to BNT token, get I first take my New York token to exchange for BNT token, and then for BNT token to exchange for Hong Kong's token. So in a big in a, in a bigger picture, that's exactly how Bancor works. Bancor is the common, common denominator, BNT, to allow you to access to all these little um, pools available. Of course, you don't have to manually go and trade with, with it. It has a lot of systems built in place. You have different liquidity pools to allow you to access liquidity very easily. This is a very good system as well because it allows for interoperability between the DLT layer 1 platforms because Bancor is built as a layer 2 application to allow liquidity between different kind of tokens. For EOS, you have this thing called Dragon Token and you want to exchange it for BAT, which is an ERC20 token or DAI. How do you exchange that? You can do it via Bancor because Bancor has a system to solve the interoperability problem. But I don't really want to talk about what Bancor is because you can find that online. I want to talk about the the math model in Bancor. Bancor uses this, this ratio. So if you want to model it out, it, it looks like this. And it's the price of the liquid token, so price of the, the, the Lisa token, equals to the, the volume of the reserve token, so let's say um, DAI or BNT, divided by the supply of liquid token, so supply of Lisa token in the pool, times the reserve ratio. And remember we talked about invariant, we talked about the constant that is available, the constant that is always there in all these um, AMMs. The AMM in Bancor itself is the reserve ratio. The reserve ratio is 50-50, uh, so 50% BNT token, 50% this liquid tokens. And this is how the model looks like. How much tokens will you get out when you put in collateral of of the reserve tokens and all that calculations. It's available in the research paper that I wrote. The interesting thing is that this reserve ratio is changeable, it's not fixed. So right now, that was in Bancor V1. Bancor V1 is where the reserve ratio is 50-50. So that means 50% is BNT, 50% is Lisa's token. 
But right now in Bancor's version 2, it automatically allows the reserve ratio to change. There's a lot of math going on behind. I just want to simplify it a little bit more. We take back the analogy just now of the, of the hydraulic press. The hydraulic press in Bancor's in Bancor's version, or in version 1, you have 50% Bancor's token, BNT token, 50% DSAF token. So it's 50-50. And if you can imagine a line in the middle of the hydraulic press, then the line in the, the, line in the middle here will show, will show a 50% split. Now, what happens when there is there's a trade in price, so DSAF's token increase in value, and now this simple hydraulic system is not a 50-50 split. And this is where arbitrages will come in to, to balance it up again. But in this process, me having my Lisa token in this pool, I will, I will have some losses because of the price difference, price movement and stuff like that. If you're interested, I can do a video on that. But right now, just understand that when the, the value of one of the tokens, if the value of Lisa token increases, then it will mess up this 50-50 ratio that I'm looking at in the hydraulic system. And so what Bancos V2 does is that you see this, this invariant, this reserve ratio that we have, initially it's invariant, which is 50-50, 50%, so it's always stuck at 50%, 0.5. But right now, it allows it to change just slightly for a short period of time to make sure that balance will come back again. And... I can explain that in, in the future video. Just let me know if you want. There's, it will be a little bit technical, just a little bit. I don't want it to be too technical for this one. Basically, the reserve ratio allows the AMM to adjust a little bit during the, the short time frame when arbitrages come in to level out the, the ratio to 50-50 again. At the same time, the people who have the money inside Bancor doesn't lose out. So this is how... AMMs can be so dynamic because it is not just a fixed ratio. We talk a lot about having a, a fixed curve, but this fixed curve has a lot of variables in there that allows for change, allows for additional input, additional dynamic changes based on whatever that's out there in the market.